Hi, it's Mrs. Moss here. Today I'm going to ask you to put your head in the clouds and start thinking about clouds because we're going to learn all about them, how they form, why they're there, why they're a certain color. Let's get started. What are clouds? Well, clouds are large masses, millions of water droplets that are suspended or hang in the air. Water evaporates from lakes and streams and oceans and it enters the air. Transpiration is the loss of water from plants through their leaves. And we know evapotranspiration is the processes of evaporation and transpiration all together. So it basically is the loss of water from the leaves on the trees and plants and the water evaporating up from the oceans and all of that enters the sky. Here's a really cool picture of transpiration in a cloud forest, in a rainforest. If you look right at the center, you see these low forming clouds. They're getting the moisture from the trees and condensing into a cloud right above the tree line. Why are clouds white? Did you ever wonder? Well, they're basically tiny droplets of water that's reflecting off of the sunlight, like a mirror reflects light. The thick clouds are dark gray underneath because not as much sunlight can pass through them. Now there are a series of steps that are involved in cloud formation that you must memorize. And we're going to remember them as the four C's. Let's, let's go through them. Well first we have warm moist air, okay, that comes from the trees and the plants and the um, oceans and the lakes evaporating. So we have warm moist air. Okay, that warm moist air is less dense as we just learned and so it will rise. As it rises, there's less air pressure so it expands. So the first step of cloud formation is not a C, it's a W. Warm moist air rises and expands. As it, as it rises, it cools. And as it cools, it hits that dew point so it condenses. And it has to condense around something, meaning the water vapor turning into a water droplet needs to have a substance to form on. We call this substance condensation nuclei, and that is what allows a water droplet to form in the sky. Now, in the sky, we have certain gases. We have pollutants that get pulled up and enter into the atmosphere. That's considered condensation nuclei. A water droplet can form around those pollutants. We can get condensation nuclei in the air through smoke, through dirt. Even some salt particles can evaporate up into the air if they're small enough. So let's, let's talk about that again. So we have warm, moist air rising, expanding. The air cools to the dew point temperature, and then it condenses around condensation nuclei. Finally, a cloud will form, and those are our four C's of cloud formation. Now, this is a picture of condensation nuclei. When you're out in the country, there's less condensation nuclei. We have higher concentrations of like salt particles and natural occurring substances that may get pulled into the atmosphere. When you're closer to a city, when we have more pollutants, then we have more condensation nuclei too. And that's where you're going to see things like smog or fog over the cities. This is a cool slide. I want you to look at this carefully. It, it gives a comparison between a rain droplet and condensation nuclei. So this big blue shape right here, this is the relative size of a raindrop. If we think about then what condensation nuclei is, because it, you know we don't look up in the air and see salt and different particles floating in it, because it's so small, there's such fine particles, right? So the condensation nuclei that's up there can be as small as 0 0.0002 millimeters. And then once a cloud droplet, uh, water droplet can form, this is about the size, 0 0.02 millimeters. And then we can see it, right? When you look up at the sky, you see millions of these little droplets together shaping a cloud. And then again, this larger object compared to these other two would be the raindrop. So once the rain, the cloud gets saturated with more and more and more and more water droplets, 
can't keep it up there anymore. So eventually it will have to fall as precipitation or rain or hail or snow. Now precipitation will cleanse the atmosphere of condensation nuclei. Because all of that condensation nuclei that's up there has water droplets, as it rains, it will bring it back down to the ground. Now that could be good, could be bad. If it's pollution, then it forms acid rain. But if it's a regular smoke or something more naturally forming like salt, then it'll just cleanse the atmosphere of the condensation nuclei. Now there are very different types of clouds and they are based on how they form and at what altitudes. You don't need to memorize this, it's just an information that you might enjoy. Um, we have stratus clouds, nimbostratus clouds, cumulus clouds, and these all, all form at lower altitudes. Then you have what's called the uh, cumulus nimbus cloud, which forms layer upon layer upon layer and gets higher in altitude. The cloud itself is quite large. We also have uh, cirrus clouds that form at the very top. And working back down, we have um, cirrocumulus, altocumulus, and altostratus. And you could probably associate those with the layers of the atmosphere that they're, grow that they're formed in. But again, you don't need to memorize that. Now, if you remember what I said to you about warm air rising, expanding, cooling, condensing, forming clouds. This will lead us into something called the orographic effect. Now this happens near mountains. That's why we have a mountain picture. Any time warm air rises, clouds will form. Okay, remember that. Any time warm air rises, clouds will form. So in this instance, we have different vegetations on different sides of the mountains. In California, we have a luscious tropical, not tropical, but a luscious um, vegetation. In the desert, on the other side of the mountains, it's arid and dry. So the difference is the mountain range that separates the two states. We have all along here our Rocky Mountain Range leading into the Sierra uh, Nevada, the Sierra Madres in the, Mexico. Now, so green, uh, California is green and lush because the coastal cities receive the moisture from the ocean. So California gets the moist air from the ocean, the water's evaporating. The warm, wet air from the Pacific rises over the mountains. And as that warm air rises, it will form clouds. It then will start to rain because so much of that water droplets form, it has to come down as rain. So the one side of the mountain that's closest to the ocean will get all that rain, whereas then there's nothing left in the atmosphere to, to rain. So as that air descends on the other side of the mountain, the air then is dry. That is known as the orographic effect. So we'll write this down. As the air mass travels over the Rockies, it will rise on what's called the windward side of the mountain. And we know windward because it's the wet side, W, W. And it will form clouds because as I said, anytime moist air rises, clouds form it will rain on this one side of the Rocky Mountains. Then it will go over the mountain and start to descend, come back down the mountain, but it will be dry air. And again, it's known as the orographic effect. The windward side is wet. Here this says sheltered side. We also call it the leeward side. The leeward side is dry. You will not hear sheltered side as much as you will hear leeward side. Okay, and here is again just a picture of this orographic effect, sometimes called the rain shadow effect. See this here? It actually, they consider it like a rain shadow because the rain is on this wet windward side, creating this like shadowy effect of having dryness on the other side. So it can either be called the rain shadow effect or the orographic effect. But the, the same principle applies. 
the warm air gets filled with moisture from the ocean and it comes and blows towards the mountains where it's forced upwards. And anytime warm air rises, it cools, condenses, and clouds form. So we have rain on this side, and then as the air comes up and over the mountains and descends, we then have dry air on the other side. Windward side and the leeward side. And I'm gonna end right here with this awesome diagram of the orographic effect, sometimes known as the rain shadow effect, because we're going to talk more about this when we talk about climate. Okay, so go back, make sure you have all of your notes for cloud formation because you must memorize those steps, as I said. Okay, so now get your head out of the clouds and start taking your notes, and we'll see you next time.